Hello everyone, Dehancer team here. Today we will talk you through color and show you how your eyes may be deceiving you. This is the introductory part of our three hour long lecture, How to See Color. Before defining color, I'd like to quote Richard Langton Gregory, author of Eye and Brain, The Psychology of Seeing. Before life came, all was silent, though the mountains toppled. Imagine an earthquake in the mountains. The earth is shaking, huge boulders are flying, stones are hitting against each other, but there is complete silence, and only when a living creature appears in this place, sound arises. Because sound is a sensation in the head of a person, or, for example, an animal, which arises when they are exposed to the waves of mechanical vibrations. As long as there is no living creature, there is no concept of sound. The situation is similar with colour. Until there is a living creature, the concept of colour does not exist, although there are natural phenomena that are capable of generating this sensation. So. Here is the definition of color. Color is a sensation that arises in a person's head under the influence of electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength of the so-called visible spectrum on his visual system. It is important to understand that these sensations can arise for other reasons. Moreover, one is able to experience color sensations with one's eyes completely closed. For example, in a dream, with hallucinations, due to painful sensations, mental associations, etc. That is, the connection between what we see and how we perceive it is rather fragile. Of course, there is that connection, but not at all as unambiguous and reliable as it is commonly believed. Let me show you how your eyes can deceive you. Let's start with a simple geometric test. At what angle to the horizontal line are these blue stripes drawn? To you it seems that under different angles, like a zigzag, but not really. All stripes are strictly parallel. In order to check that, just add more horizontal lines to the drawing. Another geometric test. How many black dots do you see? At the same time, no more than four. In rare cases, six. In fact, there are twelve of them. But you cannot see everything at once because there are so called blind spots in our eyes. Moving on to colour. What colour are the circles you see here? That's right, different pink, green, yellow, sometimes pale blue. In fact, all the circles here are the same light pink colour. If we measure the colour values of the circles using the eyedropper in Photoshop, we will see the same numbers. That is, physically, the same wavelength affects your eyes from different parts of the screen. But at the same time, you see different colors, because the perception of a color depends on the environment in which it is located. This illusion is called the Munker Whites illusion. The next test will show you how your eye can make an error in assessing brightness. What color are squares A and B on this board? You can see clearly that A is dark grey and B is light grey. But in fact, these squares are exactly the same. To see this, it is enough to connect them with one common plate. Another similar test, but this time in colour. What colour are these squares? I am absolutely sure that you perceive the bottom as yellow and the top as brown. In fact, these squares are the same colour. In order to see this, I will select one of them and move it to the other, and then move it back. As you can see, your eyes are often deceiving, so you can trust them only conditionally. And there is no such thing as true colour at all. Well, the last test. In my lectures, I call it a clean shot to the head. Now you will finally be convinced that your visual system is able to see something that does not exist at all. So, in front of us is a black and white photograph. In this test, I will show you three slides. The first one is black and white photography. It is already in front of you. 
The second slide will contain some kind of color abstraction. Those will be colored spots spread across the screen, and the third slide will be the same black and white photograph again. So, the first and the last slide are the same black and white photograph. Between them are colorful nonsense, which we will be looking at for 10 seconds. In order for the test to be as clear as possible, you need to select a point on the image and look at it steadily. Let it be, for example, the right eye of the subject. For your convenience, I have marked this point in red. Ready? Now the color abstraction will appear and the countdown will begin. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Attention, I am switching back to black and white photography. What do you see? That's right. For a few seconds, you observed a full color image while looking at the black and white. This lasts a different amount of time for different people, usually from one to six seconds. This effect is related to the fact that a residual trace remains on the retina of our eye, which takes some time to reset to zero. Moreover, this trace has inverted colors. Instead of red, green. Instead of blue, yellow, etc. The longer the retina was exposed to that, the longer that trace persists. In our test, I showed you the inverted colors of the original color photo, which flipped on the retina to normal and was layered on the black and white image. As a result, for a few seconds, you experienced a full-fledged color sensation, looking at a completely black and white image. To sum up, Working with colour, be it photography, painting or cinema, we cannot be guided by such criteria as true colour, lifelike colour, and so on. What we see is a kind of convention in our head. We are not dealing with wavelengths, but with sensations that arise under the influence of these waves or even without them at all. Accordingly, it makes sense for a colour artist, photographer or colourist, to work not with a spectrophotometer or a histogram, but with sensations. And in this case, we have completely different criteria for working with colour, namely colour variability, colour harmony and colour expressiveness. There are several big topics behind these concepts that I may try to cover in the next videos. Thank you for your attention. I hope this lecture was useful, or at least curious, and see you soon.